Hey everybody, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I'm one of the senior editors at MyJo in Toronto, and I am back again with another Boris TV tutorial, and this time we're going to take a look at creating a very cool graphic novel look using another fantastic effect inside of Boris Continuum Complete, and I'm talking about the cartoon look filter. It's a fantastic and in a lot of cases very underutilized filter because a lot of people think, oh, well, cartoon looks, you know, who really needs to use that? But you know what? You can create some very awesome looking effects. And in this case, like I said, I'm going to show you how you can create a graphic novel look inside of Avid's Media Composer in no time flat. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to quit out of QuickTime and I'm just going to Command Tab into Avid's Media Composer. Now the first thing that we obviously need is a clip to work with and I'm just going to come over here and I have my clip here from Digital Juices Video Tracks HD and instead of just taking it and dropping it into my timeline what I'm going to do first is I'm going to come over here to my effects button and I'm going to click on it because what I want to do is I want to create a pretty cool little motion effect with this just to sort of give it a sort of a fake comic booky type of look. So what I'm going to do is make sure that I have my variable speed turned on and I'm going to have it set to be 100 because I don't want to speed up or slow down the shot. I want to leave the shot the same duration. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on strobe motion and I'm going to set it to update every 7 frames. I'm going to make sure that my render is set to VTR style and I'm going to say create and render and in a matter of seconds I'm going to have a motion affected shot to work with. Now once my effect is done rendering I'm just going to come up here I'm going to hit play and you're going to see that I now have a very strobey look. Now I set the strobe to be 7. If I wanted it to be an even quicker strobe I would just set that number lower like 2 or 3. But I'm happy with the way that that looks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the entire clip by pressing T on my keyboard and I'm going to press the B key to drop it into my timeline. Now I'm ready to put on the cartoon look effect. So I'm going to press Command and 8 on the Mac, Control and 8 on Windows. I'm going to navigate over to BCC Effects and I'm going to select Cartoon Look, which is right here. I'm going to take the effect, I'm going to drag it and drop it onto my clip, and you're going to see that right away, as soon as the effect is applied, we already have a very cool cartoon look here that you could almost use just like this. That's the one thing that I love about BCC plugins. In many cases, they already look fantastic on their presets. But I want to get in and alter this a little bit because I don't want this to be a comic book look. I want it to be a graphic novel look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my shortcut to get into effects mode, which is Shift and Y on my keyboard. And I'm just going to make sure I have my timeline selected. I'll press Shift and Y. And remember, you can always get into effects mode by simply navigating over here to the left side of your timeline and clicking on the effects mode button. Now the first thing that I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to get in here and let's start at the top and I'm going to start with my cartoon levels. You can see right now it's set to 6. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set it to be about, let's just say about 28. Now you'll see as soon as I do, not a lot seems to have changed in here because here's where things are going to get really cool. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to the lines, which I have turned on, and I'm going to set my line threshold to be somewhere up around 24. Now the cool thing is you can see two things have happened here. One, as soon as I hit enter and set the line threshold to be 24, we lost a lot of that noise in here, a lot of those little black specks. Now those black specks were being caused because that clip was originally compressed at photo JPEG quality, which if you download a lot of HD stock footage from the internet, you're going to notice that most of it is compressed with photo JPEG. It is a very compressed format, still looks great when you put it on the air, but it's something that you need to take into account, especially when you're doing effects work. But you can see by adjusting the line threshold, it's now gotten rid of a lot of that noise. Now, the other thing that's happened, and I'm just going to put this back to zero for a second, watch my on-screen widget as soon as I set this to be 24. You're going to notice that the green widget adjusts itself, which obviously means I can actually adjust this right here quickly and easily by just grabbing and dragging the widget in whatever direction I want. Now, you'll see that if I come all the way back down here, we're going to get a lot of that noise back right out here. So I'm just going to get rid of that. I'll stick it up, you know, somewhere in the ballpark of 24. Even that's fine right there. Now, in a lot of cases, we could be done. Now, I'm just going to come back here because it's really in the water that you start to see this. And I'm just going to click on Bypass to turn the effect off. You can see that is really what makes the effect right there, sort of those black outlines. But what I want to do in this case is, like I said, we want this to be sort of a grungy, dingy, graphic novel type of look. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to come down and I'm going to adjust a parameter that not a lot of people might think would make a big difference, but it actually does. And that's actually line soften. And what I'm going to do is I'm not going to adjust it that much. I'm just going to set it to 2. And I want you to watch what happens as soon as I hit enter on the keyboard. You can see that now the lines have softened up, but it's given us even more of a very cool black look right over there in the water. I'm just going to do that again. You can see very bright, very vibrant. 
And as soon as I soften those lines up, it makes it even darker, even grungier, which is really what I'm going for. Now, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to come down into the advanced settings and I'm going to come down to boost contrast and I'm just going to adjust this slightly and you can see what's going to start to happen. What's going to happen is, is that this red is really going to become like a blood red and the vignette that's going on in the shot already is going to get even more darker, which is going to give us a very cool look. You can see I'm almost at about 10 right now. Where I want to set this is somewhere around, let's say 26 just like that. So you can see everything is now a very blood red and the vignette stands out quite a bit. And this is a very, very cool graphic novel look. And you can see, I'll just click through it right here. And let me just actually come out of effects mode here just so I don't have to see the on-screen widgets. And if I click through, you can see that we now have a very dingy, very grungy, very Sin City looking look for what in a lot of cases people might think is kind of a dull shot of some tomatoes. But you know what, a shot like this could be used once you alter it like this in the opening for a show like Hell's Kitchen or Iron Chef or something like that. You can see in a lot of cases it's the effects that you might not think are going to help you out that in reality are really going to affect the look of your shot and give you a very different feel to something that might be considered dull. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back into effects mode because what I want to do here is I just want to quickly show you the before and after. Now most people might come back and click on bypass, which you can do. What I like to do is use compare mode new inside BCC7. I'm just going to come down to compare here and I'm just going to drag this over. And the great thing with compare mode is if I switch out of effects mode, it actually stays on the screen and you can see that the before and after is very, very different and very, very cool at the same time. So you can see that by some simple adjustments inside of Cartoon Look, you're gonna take the ordinary looking footage and really make it look extraordinary. So if you have any questions, comments, or tutorial requests, you can send them to support at borisfx.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.